Hey, bright suns again, even though the sun's not yet up at uh, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Disney's Hollywood Studios here in Walt Disney World. It is just a few minutes past uh, the official opening time for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and already it is phenomenally crazy and busy. I'll just give you a little bit of a taste of what is going on. Let me turn the camera around. Here we are at Ronto's Roasters and uh, there is a line that goes way back for that queue. Um, Merchant Row. Uh, you can see the crowds that are assembled there. And, uh, and all the craziness that's accompanying that right now. We'll carry it over a little bit and walk toward the Millennium Falcon. Tables are taken up. Um, I tried to see if mobile ordering was happening. They said it would start on day one. However, uh, uh, I don't think it was, I don't think it operates uh, past the typical opening time of 9 a.m. So I don't know that it knows how to read uh, a mobile order at this hour of the day. Here is the end of the line for Ronto Roasters. There's another one of these signs showing an end of line for uh, Doc Ondar's next door. You see crowds lined up for that store. And uh, we're moving toward the Millennium Falcon. And uh, this is the end of the line for, uh, actually for Doc Ondar. So it's going out that way starting here going down that way and then coming back up to the entrance that is right there so all sorts of craziness there's another queue for docking bay seven and all that's going on right there so that's its own beast um, throughout the uh, experience there what you'll see here and this this really says it all. This is the uh, the crowds. This really says it all. These are the crowds uh, hustled in front of the Millennium Falcon. None of this is, well, a little portion of it is the queue. Uh, no, you know what? I don't think any portion of this is the queue for Smuggler's Run. I think they've ran it a different way. If you look out through uh, beyond that, where that is, you'll see that it's going into a backstage area and they're having to move guests in the queue for Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run to a backstage queue and then bringing them back into the onstage queue. That then comes back up around uh, Olga's Cantina. And uh, let's see if we can... Uh, continue moving through yeah so the queue is coming around the Millennium Falcon but it's also coming back around here through um, Olga's Cantina and uh, handling guests in that queue You can see that uh, the crowds are just uh, crazy. I assume that very shortly they'll be handling, if they haven't already started, they'll be handing out uh, opportunities to do a virtual queue. In fact, I should have checked that before we started. You see one party has taken out a um, cast member. They've taken out the private tour. To be able to get in without having to wait so long, good luck with that. Um, the uh, queue continues to extend, as well as a group of people who are just simply trying to get through. A lot of it is the challenge of just getting through from one place to the other. A um, lot of the fact that they have these drinking fountains set up, because uh, there are not enough to handle this kind of crush of crowds that are going on. 
you see the Thai Echelon fighter in the background, and uh, you see uh, individuals along the way here who are uh, playing the uh, games online on play on the Play Disney app. Uh, so that's going on right now, and uh, there's it been a new little queue set up over here. Let me see if I can get a good photo of this. This is an extra kiosk that's been set up over here for food and beverage. And uh, again, this queue circling around is for Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run. So it will continue as we, we're kind of walking that trail backwards as best we can. Um, over here is uh, uh, another gift shop and there's actually a separate queue for guests trying to get into that. There are queues for guests trying to get photos. Uh, you know, they're in the lines for, uh, for having a photo taken. And so all that's going on. Over here is a queue for blue milk. Um, again, I would recommend that if you're coming in here, go with the mobile ordering. Mobile ordering should be happening for um, for the blue for the milk stand and for uh, um, Docking Bay Seven and for Ronto's Roasters. So that will save you a lot of grief by taking advantage of that. Uh, we're heading through, um, we're near the Droid Depot at this point, and by the restrooms. Again, there is actually a queue, and you can see a cast member up ahead trying to deal with getting the guests through that queue, and still allow other guests to come to intersect it to take advantage of the restrooms. Um, Here's another queue going on right now. I wonder sometimes if people know what line they're in because there is so much craziness going on with queues. Uh, over here is the end of the line. Yeah, this is the, <laughs> this has got to be the funniest thing. I got to show this to you. This is the end of the line sign for the milk stand. Yeah. Yeah, go figure. I'm telling you, mobile ordering is your is your friend. Now, right here in front of us is what would be the passageway, what is the passageway to Toy Story Land. It's been blocked off during the pass holder previews. We're going to walk it through, but you see there are guests on both sides of this passageway. All of them are in line for Rise of the Resist... Uh, I'm sorry, Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run. Good morning, Matt. Wish you were here. We, You know what? Hey, there's another couple of early mornings. Matt, you and I should do this if you're not working. Um, but a lot earlier, because we got to get in queue a lot earlier. But you, you can see in the distance is Buzz Lightyear and Toy Story Land, and this queue has just simply extended out to that area and then come back around again. So it is, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna continue walking the queue and see where it takes us. I'm sure it's taking us all the way back to Grand Avenue. It was all the way to Grand Avenue an hour ago when I first got here. Uh, but uh, I'll see if it extends a lot further. Uh, when we get in there. Uh, would be great if Rise of the Resistance was open. It kind of split the craziness of this, uh, of this queue because it is so, so extensive. And I, I got to tell you, I just, this is such a contrast to all of the discussion that's been going on about how there are no crowds at Disneyland. And while... Uh, I don't think this intensity will be here a week from now or months from now. If they had only a fourth of the attendance in this park, in this land right now, it would be considered a phenomenal success. So there, uh, 
people are here, they're excited, there's a great deal of energy. Here you can see, uh, you can see the pathway leading up there. Other queues for Droid Depot that are found throughout. Here are the land speeders over here, and again the queue that extends for those waiting for uh, Smuggler's Run. It's uh, there's uh, an intensity uh, with the number of crowds going on. Over here is Merchant Row. So. I started my podcast right here on the balcony of Ronto's Roasters. So we've kind of taken a circular tour so far, and we're going to continue our way out the uh, out the door here and uh, see what happens as we approach uh, the exit or entrance of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. See what comes of that. It's uh, it's a nice, beautiful morning. This is a great time to be here. You can you can see the spires of uh, well, Black Spire Outpost, and uh, it's just really it's really great to be here in the evening. Now the park closing is supposedly. 10 o'clock tonight, but man, you'd think they would start extending that, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if by the time by the time noon hits, uh, they haven't extended it, and they haven't made contingency plans to keep it extended. I think that they have done a great job here at the studios, and I have to give Disneyland credit, because Disneyland did a lot of work to try to prepare for heavy crowds, and they certainly set a great example but, uh, but these people are having to execute it, and they're doing a really good job of, of uh, trying to make this all come together. Right now, we're in the resistance camp. This is where Rise of the Resistance will open on December 5th, um, and then things will really get crazy. Over here, you see an A-wing fighter. And again, you'll see those same crowds that we've been talking about all the way extended back here. So my guess is that this is easily a four hour wait for those who are back to this point at this, uh, at this time. And again, we're only a few moments into the opening, uh, official opening hour of the park. Uh, if, if guests are thinking of coming here um, <laughs> at 9 a.m., I think they're going to be in for a little surprise because uh, uh, this thing is this thing is uh, just overwhelming at this point. We're going to come back around. This is the opening. Um, From this is the major opening into the uh, Galaxy's Edge area, and you see that as we move forward, there is a queue that is still extending uh, and uh, it is going into a backstage area back here um so i uh it's been a long time since i as a disney uh cast member were in that backstage area but that's where the queue seems to be going at this point what's going on right now is you see that virtual queue times are being given, or guests are being invited to uh, get a virtual queue time. And for those who don't know how to do that, these cast members are here to kind of help them plan that out and to make that a reality. Um, 
and I think that uh, up ahead they're actually diverting the guests uh, even further to, and recommending that they uh, that they uh, get a virtual get into the virtual queue. I'm gonna step back in here and again. I have to say this has got to be at least a four and a half hour queue to get into this uh, attraction, Smuggler's Run. So all sorts of all sorts of craziness. We're gonna just uh, come back over here and show you what an empty queue looks like. <laughs> this is this queue is for. Um, Rise of the Resistance and uh, it won't always be empty and in fact I think it will be uh, uh, much longer than Smuggler's Run when the whole of it comes together again um, but yeah uh, uh, you can't believe how many people there are here I'm uh, turning this around to say that uh, this seems phenomenally successful. I hope that the studios keeps opening it very well. Starting Sunday, they're opening it early for hotel guests. So if you are not a hotel guest, in particular if you're in the area, your annual pass holder, you need to come O-Dark 100, uh, uh, like 4.30, now, I would recommend being here about 4 or 4.30 um, in the next two days if you don't want to wait a three, four hour uh, wait to get onto uh, Smuggler's Run. Um, I love that attraction. I think it's a great attraction. I'm a little hard pressed to want to wait for five hours to go on that ride. Um, but uh, so if you happen to be in the area, I would suggest setting your alarm clock real early to do that. And uh, anyway, we uh, I think you've caught a sense of the excitement. The, the sun is well, still another hour before daylight, I think, but uh, things are still starting to, to uh, uh, come up. So, um, so Jeff Gober, what are you going to do now? Well. I'm gonna go check out whether or not mobile ordering has <laughs> started happening and order me some blue milk. So in the meantime, have a great day and we'll give you more uh, coverage of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge as the day progresses. Remember, uh, in the evening, this evening, we will be doing uh, Disney News on Parade. Whether it's from here or whether it's from my office, uh, please plan on joining us this evening for Star for. Uh, Disney News on Parade. Thanks everybody. Appreciate you joining us. Have a great morning.